the last second. See that? Last second he jumps out of the way. But I jump out and I gun him down. Yo, yo, what's up? It's Day Day here with another gameplay, bringing you a regular solos match. I'm going to walk you through it step by step of what I'm thinking. So, always go Superstore. I drop in the bottom office. Um, whenever you're dropping Superstore, or any drop for that matter, especially if it's high traffic, like Hospital, uh, Superstore, make sure you're going to the same spot until you get very, very comfortable with it. Um, so, this way you know how the traffic pattern goes. Um, so, I go come in. I immediately go and find me a gun that I'm very comfortable with. Uh, if you remember my other videos, I explained that's what you need to do. Have a gun you're comfortable with. Uh, I got a plate that I can use for extra. I see the gunfight going on at the front, so I immediately pop a dead silence and head up there. By the time I get up there, the guy is, is gone. Uh, he's already killed one guy, and then he pops around the corner and shoots me because I misoverlooked him. So I back off and I plate. That's another big thing you want to make sure you do is you back off and you plate when necessary. Uh, if someone's already got the advantage on you, then you don't need to stay for that gunfight. Funny thing is I just thought that that uh, forklift was an actual person, but he wasn't. So I see the gunfight going on again, and I go back to Chow. And when I get up here, I'll find out that he's actually still not there. So... We're, we're early on into the match. Still got 134 people left. So uh, notice what I'm doing right here, though, right? So I'm going I'm to rewind that for a second. Right? Centering is super important. Notice that my centering is right where the middle of the body would be or up, right? Usually someone camping right there, and I immediately snap onto that. If you're not practicing your centering on a very regular basis, you're doing it wrong. Centering actually can save you in this game more times than you would think. So I'm going to use centering right here. I pop it up. I think he's going to be right there and he's not. Uh, and right here is where it comes in handy. So I center and I snap onto him. Let's rewind that again. So one thing you're going to notice is that I immediately, I see him right there and I immediately pop myself over to cover. So I've got cover from my chest down, but I'm going to slide to my left so I can use this wall to keep peeking backwards and forth. That's another thing. You want to be aware of your surroundings. So that's another good reason to drop uh, in the same spot over and over again to make sure you get very, very comfortable with the area and know what's going on with it. Uh, what I don't notice immediately is there's a guy sitting it to my right on that little uh, ramp thing. And you'll see him shoot in a second. And it almost cost me. Like he's just sitting in the in a dark space camping. So if if you're that person that camps, understand this. You will not get better. You're only going to be as good as the gunfights you get into. And if you're camping, you're not putting yourself in as many gunfights as possible. So I do get lucky right here. My centering wasn't on point. Uh, but sometimes it's the name of the game. Luck is uh, what you need sometimes. It's better to be lucky than good sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, But I get that kill. Now I'm up two kills. Uh, and I, I, I figure that's pretty much it. So I just continue to loot up until I get my loadout. And then we push forward. So we're going to do just that. We're going to continue So now I'm going to go over here because there's no buy station at Superstore. And I immediately notice off to the left that there's a guy that ran into Superstore. So I want to put myself in the best position possible. High ground always wins. I can hear him with my headset. So that's another tip you want to do is make sure you have a headset. Anyone notice what I did wrong right there? Let's bring it back a second. Look at my centering. I tell you how important centering is, and if he was closer, like around here, then this would be at his head or his chest. But look where it's at when he first pops around, right? I keep aiming now. It's it's not even on his feet. It's lower than that. So that's a mistake on me, and it almost cost me, as you can see. But his centering was off as well. You could see it whenever he goes to pull up. 
The thing that threw me off is there's no heartbeat sensor there, and he didn't call in a UAV because I never had notification of UAV. So I was really confused on how he knew where I was at. Maybe he's, I'm assuming he had to see me like in the store or something. Um, I guess it is possible that he heard me as well. So call in a UAV. And the next big tip that I can give you when you're playing solo, any, any match for that matter, is vehicles. A lot of people tell you not to get in vehicles because it's the number one way to get you killed. But it's not. Running in the open is the best way to get yourself killed. And I've learned that the hard way a lot like a lot of people have so I use you'll see in this video I use a vehicle to my advantage the entire time now I wish I had a Bertha during this video but I don't think I used one once um, actually I know I don't thinking back on it uh, another vehicle you you don't one vehicle you don't want to use is that dang dirt bike although it is a lot of fun and I do like whipping it around so using a vehicle to your advantage and playing with the bounties so 84 people this lobby's starting to die pretty quick uh, I grab a bounty so I could track someone down. I can I already got the UAV on him. Uh, I can see that he's got the elevation above me uh, with the arrow of the circle. So he's on the roof, right? It doesn't mean that he's on the roof. It just means his elevation's higher than me, but I've been playing long enough uh, that I know that he's on the roof. It's the solos. They're going to camp. They're going to find their nearest corner. They're going to find their safe zone, and they're, they're going to they're gonna per, uh, perch up. So... I want to take a, a spot that he's not going to be aware of or what I feel that he's not going to be aware of. There's a hundred different windows on here. He's not going to know which one I'm about to break when he does hear it break, but I could see him. So he's looking for me. He heard the glass break, but he can't find me. Easy kill all day. Again, I'm aiming from the chest up. I got my centering up whenever I'm coming out that window so I can have the best advantage. I see him. I go back in, and then I come back out already pre-aiming, ready to take him out. Easy kill. We're up four kills now. Jump back in the vehicle. Um, I see this car going behind me. Uh, for some odd reason, I just had this weird challenge that I wanted to take him on, uh, but I didn't. Let's go back for a second. Maybe you didn't catch what I did when I jumped out of the vehicle. So jumping out of the vehicle is a huge deal, right? Because what it's going to do is allow the the game to continue to send the car in the red so the enemy doesn't know you jumped out it's like a fraction of a second maybe even a whole second but it's enough time it's more than enough time for you to snap onto a team uh, an enemy and kill them before they realize you're even out of the car unless they're watching you jump out of the car which is another key important thing is you see someone driving a vehicle don't watch the vehicle watch the person in the vehicle the teammates in the vehicle because they never lie once they jump out you'll know the vehicle won't change colors until afterwards. But here's another thing that I do is I know the vehicle's off in the distance, so I immediately switch to my primary weapon because I always have my secondary um, pulled out whenever I get into a vehicle in case I need to jump out in this close quarters. So keep that in mind at what, what weapon you are holding and what you need to switch to. So I immediately jump out and I press uh, Y, switch to my long arm, and I take the shots. Uh, unfortunately, I do not get this kill, but I thought that was an important lesson whenever you're using a vehicle. Always be aware of what gun you're, you got in your hand when you jump out, and it should be a submachine gun. And be aware that if you need to switch weapons when you jump out. Unfortunately, this guy has a missile, and he, he, catch, he catches me off guard. I was going to jump out as soon as I rounded this corner, but the missile copped to me before I could do that. So... Self-revive is a huge, huge thing. I hear so many people say they shouldn't get a self-revive when they're playing solo because you're going to die up close anyways. That's not always the case. A lot of times the sniper sitting on a rooftop or it's a missile coming in for your car. That self-revive self -revive just saved this game. So I pop it. I immediately start slide canceling while plating and get behind cover. Make sure someone's not on my, my six. And then I start moving. And I find myself another vehicle. I see shots being in, in front of me, being shot off in front of me, and I see that there's a loadout drop. So I know there's going to be a guy here. Again, see what I do? I jump out. I switch weapons. I'm pre-aiming up top. I've got my centering up top. Easy, easy shot. Easy shots right there. Take him out. Um, another thing you want to make sure you do, I don't do it uh, for a couple times. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, it doesn't catch me off guard. 
uh, is make sure your guns are loaded when you get back in your vehicle. Last thing you want to do is jump out and only better get off a couple of shots and then you're out of ammo. So then you find yourself in a tough spot. So I immediately circled back around. I saw this guy coming in, centering up top, chest and above. He's done for. Before he can even turn around and do anything, he's done for. So right there, I didn't load, you know. So uh, I see this next car coming up. I figure this is the same vehicle I was shooting at earlier, but I'm not really sure. I don't, maybe it's not, uh, because it's not smoking as much as I think it would be. As you can see, I switched seats and I start engaging the the, uh, the, the contact, and right there is where it catches me, because I start engaging and I don't, Stop engaging while the car vehicle is still moving. Um, you got to be aware of your surroundings. That's the only tip I got for that guy. He comes running up. He's not paying attention to his mini map in the slightest bit. The mini map is your friend, and he gets ran over. Had he been paying attention to the mini map, he could have easily slide canceled around that rock, and he wouldn't have been ran over. He would have been shot though. I would have jumped out more than likely to take him on. Um, just because I have the car to my advantage and I know where he's at. It's another key thing to keep in mind. So you're going to see right here in a few seconds where I jump out. The guy, this guy is really good. He's got he's got map awareness. You see the cars coming up. The last second, see that? Last second he jumps out of the way. But I jump out and I gun him down. He didn't even know that I was out of the vehicle. He was just paying attention to the mini map. Not really much he could have done there as far as knowing when I was in the car because he had to slide cancel his way out of the way. But all I'm trying to do now is just get to my second loadout so I can get Ghost. I definitely need Ghost when we're playing solos. So I come up here. I'm able to get it barely. And then I move on. So going back to the guy that I just ran over, right? Not ran over, but the guy that I jumped out and I shot. And the guy that I ran over. The problem with their game style is they're waiting to the last minute to start rotating. And you're going to see where that's going to cost someone else later on as well. You want to make sure that you're rotating early instead of rotating late. Yeah, no one can come up behind you if you got the gas to your back. But you got the gas to your back. You can't go anywhere either when someone starts engaging you. I started getting engaged right there, and I didn't know where the guy was. So there's no point in me trying to jump out and then try and find him. So I just continue moving forward. I need to find me a buy station because I have a lot of money. I have yet to be able to call on a UAV other than when I left Superstore. And that's a huge, huge perk in this in, in solos. It's a, it's a, it's a must-have one run any kind of solo, solo duo, solo solos, solo quads, whatever. You want to make sure you've constantly got UAVs up. You keep the money flow going. Um, so that's why I usually do one or two bounties to start the money flow. And then from that point forward, when you kill someone, you're getting their money. So you're usually able to have a UAV up pretty consistently, especially in just regular solos. People never want to spend their money. So I see this car coming up, chunk of C4. Looking back on it, I probably could have detonated that and I would have killed him. But I, I beam his car. I beam him. He immediately gets behind the barrier and plates up. And that's a great thing that he did right there. Was he plates up. The only problem was he immediately tries to get into the car. And people don't realize how long this animation is to get into a vehicle and it costs him. So you see he plates up, gets in the vehicle. And, and he just gets mowed down. There's there's no beating that. What he should have done was just engage. That's the only thing he had was the challenge. Pop up, get a couple shots on, and then go from there. I mean, I was standing kind of an opening. I was using the car to my advantage, the car to the right, not this car. Uh, but jumping in the vehicle to try and get out of there was not the move. So moving forward, I know I need to get, like I said, get a UAV. I see this buy station up here. Also notice that there is a car here, right? And when I come up here, I immediately hear an explosion. And I'm like, okay, so there's definitely a person here. He's not on a heartbeat. I hear him running up. Get a couple of shots. There's only one way to go. He's going to go right there, and I take him out. This guy was not aware of what he had in his hand when he was running around because he tried sniping me. Unless you are...
some amazing sniper, don't run around with your sniper out. It's just not the move. You can switch to that. Um, he had a UAV. I don't know if he was using his or not, but he could have. I had all that money. I had 18 grand, so I start dropping it off. Right there, I get sniped from a guy that, uh, that I marked. I didn't know that he could see me. So I get lucky. Um, otherwise, he should have he should have killed me right there. He didn't hit a headshot. So, but uh, I call him my UAVs. I see where he's at. I'm gonna push him now because he's gonna be out in the open, looking for him. See him. He can't see me because of the trees. So he does what he's supposed to, and he gets out of there. Now, he tries to plate up right there. And he does a good job of getting at least one plate in. But what he should have done was lay down. You want to lay down, go completely prone, behind the tree, facing where your enemy is to create the lowest profile. But it's going to do him no good right here because I push him, pre-aim him, chest and above, get the easy kill. He doesn't even crack me. Uh, again, he's holding on to all this money. If, you're, if you've got money, guys, do not hold on to it. Um, I also see that he has the harp. So I call in this advanced UAV, make sure that I load all my guns, and now it's hunting season. These last few kills are going to be uh, pretty, pretty easy. This guy is not complete. He's completely clueless. Never mind. I thought he turned around and started shooting at me, but that's another game. Um, completely clueless of what's going on. This other guy could have been peeking out that window to see that I was pushing him. Could have looked at his mini map to see that I was pushing with the car. But he wasn't, and he thought that I was just now coming through the door. Again, be aware of your surroundings. Use that mini-map to your advantage. He's got so much information on it at any given moment. Um, and don't get so comfortable. See, the, the gas is pushing in, and he's still sitting at the house with no vehicle. Like what? I don't understand what the plan is at that point. You've got to make a move. Look, if you die, you start a new game. It's not the end of the world. I see this guy is hoofing it down the middle of the road. Don't be this guy. He gets out of the way. The problem that he has right there, we're going to rewind it. The problem that he has, right, is right now he's got a car coming at him. So he knows that I'm there. He's got a car coming at him, and he's got to deal with me. I'm pretty sure he saw me jump out. But... First thing he's got to do is get out of the way of the car. And it's going to put him in the middle of some kind of animation. He's going to be slide canceling. He's going to be sprinting. He's going to be doing anything other than fighting. That's why he shouldn't be coming down the road in the middle of the road. And I get him right there. Easy day. Uh, and it looks like, now that I'm looking back at this as well, he's not moving towards the circle. So I don't know if he was coming towards me because he saw the car or he was trying to loot. Neither one of those is the play. Not in the middle of the road. If he was coming towards me, he should have took like some kind of high ground where it wouldn't be as easy to see him. Like I can see him on the mini map, but it's really easy to see him in correlation. You know how how hard it is to see someone on the mini map, and then like there's there's trees like like right here is a perfect example. There's trees, and I'm trying to find this one guy. Um, I don't notice the two down below me shooting. Maybe that's a stick. Nope, that's a person down there. I'd never notice him. But when you run in the road or you run in some kind of open field, it's really easy to correlate the mini map to where you are. Again, this is what I was talking about earlier. This guy is waiting to the last second to move. He's moving with the gas. Like, yeah, you can not run it, but it's going to cost him. I got this guy in the Bertha coming up through here. He's just sitting in it all game. Um, unfortunately, he touches me and it, it like destroys my vehicle almost. But see, there you go. Didn't do him any good whenever you got the gas to your back and I'm able to run you over. So I got this berth on me. I realize I got to shake him. And that's actually what I'm talking about at the moment. I got to shake him. I got to get rid of him because I don't want to jump out because he's right behind me. He will see my character jump out and he will know that I jump out. So I know that he can't turn as good. So I go off here to the left and he gets out and he picks up a bounty. And that's one of the things that I did notice. So this guy's picking up a bounty. He's using a bertha. I don't think, I, I've got in my head, okay, this guy has got some decent gun skills. Um, 
Wait a minute. So I did see a guy run in front of me when I was playing this game, but I was so confused at where he went. Huh. It's a ghost character right there. That is funny. I, I didn't notice that. But anyways, I got an idea that this guy in the Bertha is a pretty decent player. So I'm keeping that in mind um, as I come over here. What I want to do is be able to get my C4 in front of the truck as he's coming towards me. Uh, so I get behind him. I'm going to switch seats and engage as much as I can. But the Bertha is going to be able to eat a lot of bullets. Fortunately, this man's got an ego and he wants to ego chow. So, destroy the vehicle. I'm not paying attention. You see that? But this cost me. Watch the second you see the vehicle's destroyed. He's already out. If you watch the back end of this vehicle, right there he is. And he's jump shotting. I'm paying attention to the truck, not paying attention to him, like I said earlier, and it costs me. It even it gets it gets pros. That move works for everybody. And, and I, I really believe I would have beat this guy, but his shots weren't on point. Um, so that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, I want to thank every single one of y'all 